हेलो गाइज आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड आई एम विशाली के कान एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग द ऑप्टिकल कम्युनिकेशन टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द पिन फोटो डायोड कन्फिग्रेशन वॉट आर द वेरियस कन्फिग्रेशन दैट आर यूज एंड वॉट आर द एडवांटेजेस एंड डिसएडवाटेजेस ऑफ यूजिंग every configuration we are going to talk about the two configuration the first is the front illuminated pin or second is the side illuminated pin we are going to talk in detail about both of them and after that we are going to talk in detail about the factors that are limiting the speed of the photodiode so i hope you understood what all we are going to discuss and in addition to that if you have still not watched the previous video where i talked about the introduction to the pin photodiode you are requested to watch that first and then you can come to this video so let's start the discussion about the pin photodiode so now we are having the, the intermediate layer in between the p plus and the n plus region right we are call, we are calling it as the i region and now here you can see we have the two types of configuration the front illuminated pin and the side illuminated pin as the name suggests in the side illuminated pin so the light injected is parallel to the junction plane so this is the junction plane and the light is illuminated in the parallel plane to the junction plane so now when this junction so junctions are formed in this plane light is also falling on this plane but in the front illuminated pin we are having the light which is falling it is perpendicular to the junction plane so light is falling from upside you can see so this is the light that is falling so now if i am talking about the 0.8 to 0.9 micrometer wavelength so at that time the depletion width if i have the depletion width of 20 to 50 micrometer then i am going to get a very high efficiency i am going to get the efficiency which is nearly equal to 85% with the help of the front illuminated pin so this is how front illuminated pins are preferred but on the other hand you can see in the side illuminated pin we are having the more surface area for the absorption of the light energy so that the electrical energy will be converted so the current will be converted so here the light is falling on directly on the i region you can see so i will be having the large absorption over here large absorption width nearly around 500 micrometer is there but if here large absorption width is not there we have the other benefits like we have the higher efficiency if i want to work in 0.8 to 0.9 micrometer with a depletion width of 20 to 50 micrometer so absorption width would be 20 to 50 and i will be having the 85% a very good efficiency in this case the dark currents would be reduced so dark current is of the order of 1 nanoampere and the it will be having the faster response right the response would be very fast in the terms of nanoseconds i am going to get the response so although we are not going to get a very good absorption area in the front illuminated pin but we are going to get lot of other advantages now coming to the side illuminated pin i already told you the light is illuminated or injected parallel to the junction plane so here light is injected now we will be having the large absorption and we will be having very high sensitivity sensitivity would be nearly close to the band gap limit which is 1.09 micrometer right so here i hope you understood the difference between both of them i am not using the germanium pin photo detectors germanium pin photo detectors why i am not using it because here we have very very high dark current of the order of 100 nanoampere which is very high so i am avoiding using the germanium pin photo detectors we can uh, further use the indium 0.53 gallium 0.43 arsenide so this is the alloy type of 35 alloy type of photodiode that we have or i can use the indium phosphide to detect up to 1.67 micrometer wavelength so if i increase the wavelength the energy would be less so if i want to detect a very less energy 
uh, optical signal i need to have a very sensitive photo detector these are very good photo detectors that we have so i hope you understood the basic things now coming to the factors that are limiting the speed of the photo detectors i am talking about pn as well as pin both of them what are the factors that are limiting the speed first would be the drift velocity so obviously the drift velocity would be there because it is the time required for the carrier to move from the depletion region towards the junction right so drift time of the carrier through the depletion region is of utmost important because it is going to tell me what is the time required for this current to travel and cross the depletion region right so i am taking the drift velocity for a carrier which is present at one end of the depletion region and it has to travel to the second end so this would be the maximum time required for the drift uh, motion of the carrier right so field in the depletion region exceed a saturation value then if here i already know here we have the intrinsic field right so if the charges is holes are moving in this direction intrinsic field direction would be this only so if i have higher intrinsic field if i am increasing the intrinsic field and if i have somehow a very high intrinsic field then i will be having the saturation value with which the carrier travels towards the other end of the depletion region this saturation value by which the carrier is traveling to the another end of the depletion region is the drift velocity so drift velocity would be the highest velocity achieved by the carrier to cross this depletion region so the time taken time taken by the charge or the carrier to cross this uh, depletion region can be computed as t drift is equal to w upon vd where w is the width of the depletion region and vd is the drift velocity right vd we can find out at the maximum of ed so now when i have the maximum of intrinsic uh, electric field at that time we have the saturation uh, velocity this saturation velocity is called the vd now if i have the higher intrinsic electric field so like let's suppose we have e is greater than 2 into 10 raised to power 4 volt per centimeter so i am going to get the maximum velocity of drift so the v drift maximum is 10 raised to power 7 coulomb per centimeter and if i have taken the width to be 10 micrometer so the time will be equal to nearly 0.1 nanosecond so you can put these things v over here w over here you can find time to be 0.1 nanosecond so you can see the time required for drifting of the carrier to one end to the another end of the depletion region is in nanoseconds which is very less now coming to the diffusion time now we already know in the previous video i already talked about the diffusion time diffusion time is comparatively higher than the drift time so diffusion time of the carrier is generated which are outside the depletion region now when we have the light which is falling outside of the depletion region so this was a depletion region and here let's suppose light was falling so here the holes are generated in the n type of region these holes have to drift to the p type of region so for that first here the diffusion will be happening because in the n type region we have excess of electrons and here because i have excess of electrons these will move towards its low concentration to the high concentration holes will move towards the high concentration first it reaches to the depletion region and when it reaches to the de depletion region it will gain the drift velocity but before that it has to move with the diffusion velocity which will be taking more time than the drift time so the time for the diffusion is calculated as d square upon 2 dc where dc is the minority carrier diffusion coefficient and d is the distance where the carrier has been generated outside the depletion region right so now if i have hole for hole 10 micrometer of the silicon distance through the diffusion it is taking 10 nanoseconds or if i have the electrons if electron is moving 10 micrometer in silicon only it is taking 8 nanoseconds you can see the difference the time drift was around 0.1 nanoseconds 
when I had the 10 micrometer distance covered and here also we have the 10 micrometer distance covered it is 10 or 8 nanosecond which is 100 times higher right so T drift is 100 times lesser than the T diffusion so this is how you can see the diffusion time is playing a big big role in determining the speed of the photo detector now the third parameter is the time constant which is incurred by the capacitance of the photodiode with its load so in the photodiode we always made a load with the photodiode so now we have various charges which are stored at the junction right when we have the reverse bias at the junctions also we are having the various charge stored so these charge are stored which are causing the generation of the voltage dependent capacitance so if i have the variation of charge variation of charge is going to cause the variation of voltage which is going to cause the generation of the voltage dependent capacitance so this capacitance whenever i have the capacitance so we know whenever we have the capacitor and resistor in a circuit it is going to give me the rc time delay so this time delay is also incurred and where c is given by eia upon w a is the diode junction area w is the depletion layer width and epsilon i is the permittivity of the semiconductor so i hope you understood all of the things that i have discussed in this video if you have any doubt you can put the doubt in the comment now and i will be trying to resolve your doubt as soon as possible I hope you like this session. If you like it, please push the like button, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends and give me your feedback. Thank you so much.